All right, on to diagram number two, the summer solstice, which is on or around June 21st. You know that on the summer solstice, the tilt of the Earth's axis, which is 23 and a half degrees, is as far towards the sun's rays as possible for the entire year. So this says the vertical ray um, is directly overhead at 23 and a half degrees north. It's our longest day for the year uh, in the northern hemisphere, and it's the start of our summer season. So it's asking you to shade in the darkness. Now, when I do the summer solstice, what you're going to see is the terminator, that line separating light from dark, is still straight up and down. Since the sun's rays are coming from this side, the terminator is perpendicular to the sun's rays, and I'm simply going to shade this in, and that's the part of the earth that's in darkness. So everything over here on this side would be experiencing nighttime. Obviously, the Earth rotates. So as the Earth is rotating, points that are in the darkness may actually rotate into the light. You should know we're rotating from west to east. That's always the direction of the rotation. The Earth rotates from west to east. So point C is in the darkness, it's actually at midnight now, but point C is going to rotate 15 degrees per hour, and when it crosses through the terminate, you'd experience sunrise and it would move or rotate into the light. Um, now, the questions for this are on the diagram underneath this. So, shade in the areas of darkness, we did this. How many hours of daylight are there on the North Pole? Now, looking at the diagram, the North Pole is completely in the light. If the Earth rotates, that point stays in the light. Okay, if you're at the North Pole on the summer solstice, you would be getting 24 hours of complete daylight. Now, for the South Pole, once again, look at your model. On the South Pole, anything below the Antarctic Circle. When you rotate a point, point G would come all the way over here and it would still be in darkness. So for the summer solstice, the bottom 23 and a half degrees is in darkness and for this one, the South Pole would be getting zero hours of daylight. That's also known as the duration of insulation. Now, when they ask you about the equator, no matter what day of the year it is, when you look at a diagram like this, the equator is always half light, half dark. Okay, Since half of it's in light and half of it's in darkness, as it rotates every single day of the year, no matter what day it is, you get 12 hours of darkness and 12 hours of daylight. That's only for the equator. So point E is on the equator, and no matter what season it is, you get 12 hours for the duration of insulation. Now, looking at New York, you can visually see that New York is going to have more than 12 hours of daylight. You know that you live in New York. In the summer, we get a longer period of daylight. From here to this point, on the equator, that represents 12 hours of daylight and 12 hours of darkness. In New York, from here to here would be 12 hours, plus you're getting some additional. How many hours of daylight you get really is, you know, based on your latitude. And the farther north you go in the summer from the equator, the longer the period of daylight hours is going to be. In New York, you know, it can vary a little bit from north to south, but in New York, usually we get about 15 hours of daylight in the summer. Now, the Arctic Circle is everything from 66 and a half degrees north or higher. Looking at the diagram, the Terminator does not touch the Arctic Circle. So, on the summer solstice, if you could see it, the entire Arctic Circle, everything from 66 and a half degrees 
up would be getting 24 hours of daylight. When you tilt the, tw the top 23 and a half degrees into the light, that means the bottom 23 and a half degrees is in darkness. So looking at the Antarctic Circle here for diagram two, which is the summer solstice, on the summer solstice, the vertical rays hitting the tropic of Cancer, that means the top 23 and a half is in light, the bottom 23 and a half is in darkness, and that means the Antarctic Circle would have zero hours of daylight. Now, what we have left to do is calculate the angle. This gets slightly more challenging because now the vertical ray is not at the equator, it's actually at the tropic of Cancer. So, if we're going to find the noon-sun angle, the first thing that we have to do is determine the difference in latitude from the location to the vertical ray. How far are you away from the vertical ray? Okay, the farther you move from the vertical ray, the lower the angle of the noon sun gets. But step one is always going to be to determine how far you are from the vertical ray. Okay, I'll label that as step one. Step number two is going to do 90 degrees, which represents the noon sun at the vertical ray, minus that difference is going to give you the noon sun angle. So hopefully that's in the diagram, which it is, which is great. It's probably easiest to start at point D. Point D is on the Tropic of Cancer. You see the vertical ray is hitting, which means you're getting a 90 degree angle right at the vertical ray. So if you're at the Tropic of Cancer, which is point D, the altitude of the sun is going to be 90 degrees. Now, to get to the equator, you'd have to shift down 23 and a half degrees. So the equator is point E. I'll put the math down here. I do 90 minus 23.5. That's how far away I am from the, oh, sorry, 90, I completely messed that up, sorry. I did the first step in my head. I'm doing 23 and a half degrees minus zero, and I get 23.5 degrees away. I've moved 23 and a half degrees away from the vertical ray. Then I do 90 minus 23.5 degrees, and I get 66.5 degrees. So for point E, which is at the equator, you'd get 66.5 degrees. Point F is at the Tropic of Capricorn. Now by looking at the model, it's going to help me. I'm starting from the vertical ray. I'm moving 23 and a half degrees to reach the equator, and then I'm dropping in an additional 23 and a half degrees. If you don't have a diagram like this, you can always draw it yourself. Okay, you put down, you know the vertical ray is here at 23 and a half degrees north. Now, for point F, which is the Tropic of Capricorn, You've moved 23 and a half plus 23 and a half, so you've moved 47 degrees away from the vertical ray. So I'm going to do 23.5 degrees plus 23.5 degrees gives me, I've moved 47 degrees away from the vertical ray. Now I do 90 minus. 47 degrees, and I would get a 43 degree angle for point F, which is the Tropic of Capricorn. All right, 
I'm starting at the vertical ray, always, because that's where I know the angle. And I'm sliding all the way down to point G. I move 23 and a half to reach the equator. When I cross the equator, if my vertical ray and my location are on opposite sides, on opposite sides I wind up adding them together. It takes me 23 and a half to reach the equator and an additional 66 and a half to make the Antarctic Circle. So for point G, what I would get is I'm starting at the vertical ray, which is 23 and a half degrees. I move to the equator and I move an additional 23 and a half degrees and I find I'm 90 degrees away from the vertical ray. Now, I know I'm 90 degrees away, so I do 90 minus 90, and at point G, you get an angle of zero. Point H is at the South Pole. Point H is in complete, utter darkness. You have to move 23 and a half degrees down from the Tropic of Cancer, then an additional 90 degrees all the way down to the South Pole. So if I'm looking at H, I'm doing 23.5. They're opposite, so I add, I add the 90, and I get like what seems like a ridiculous value. I get 113.5 degrees away from the vertical ray. If I do 90 minus 113.5, use a calculator, but you're going to get minus 23.5 degrees. Now, that literally means that the sun is 23 and a half degrees below the horizon. It is not going to rise for another three months until you hit the equinox. So for this one, you could say minus 23 and a half degrees. If you just wanted to say no sun, that would be accurate because you're in 24 hours of darkness. Now, all of those were moving into the opposite hemisphere. What happens if you're on the same side as the vertical ray? New York is at 43 degrees north. You're starting at 23 and a half and you're moving up to 43. So when you're on the same side, what I'm going to do for the same side if I go from 23 and a half degrees north up to 43, I'm going to do 43 degrees minus the 23 and a half. So when I'm on the same side, and I'll take the calculator to show this, I'll clear that, I do 43 minus 23.5, and what I'm going to get for my angle there is I get 19.5 degrees away from the vertical ray. So this is at point D, which is in New York. Now, since I've moved 19.5 degrees away from the vertical ray, step two is 90 minus 19.5, and I'll use the calculator. 90 minus 19.5 should equal 70.5 degrees. Now, on Long Island, where we are, that's definitely going to be, you know, a little bit higher because we're more like 40.5, not 43. But for this one, you'd get a 70.5 degree angle for the noon sun, you know, somewhere upstate. All right. Now, the Arctic Circle is at 66 and a half degrees north. So if I'm doing point C, uh, point B, sorry, which is the Arctic Circle. I'm starting at 23 and a half degrees north. I'm staying north. I'm going up to 66 and a half. So I do 66.5 degrees minus the 23 and a half degrees. I'm already above the equator. And 66.5 divided by, no, oops, 66.5 minus 23.5 is 43 degrees away. So you do 90 minus 43 degrees, and you get a 47 degree angle. Okay, 47 degrees is, you know, not 
that high, it's about halfway up in the sky. Now, the last one is the North Pole. You're getting 24 hours of continuous daylight. Does not mean it's going to be warm, because honestly, if it's a low angle, lower angles of the sun's rays do not give you much intensity. The sun isn't that powerful, even though it's above the horizon. So, for point A, I would do 90 minus the 23 and a half degrees. You're on the same side, so I'm not going to do that. I know the number. 90 minus 23 and a half is 66.5 degrees away from the vertical ray. I subtract my 66.5 from 90, which is the angle at the equator, and I get 23.5 degrees. That number keeps coming up. So this one at the North Pole, you'd be getting 24 hours of continuous daylight, and the sun would be 23 and a half degrees above the horizon. So that's diagram two, the summer solstice.